So four, that's and that's an at alpha for reversal factor 10A inhibitors in patients with acute major bleeding, and it'll be presented by Dr. Stuart Connolly. So ladies and gentlemen, factor 10A inhibitors are safe and effective drugs, but occasionally patients who are receiving these drugs have acute severe bleeding. And when they do, if the bleeding is severe, it can be very difficult to manage because there is no specific reversal drug currently available to reverse the effects of factor 10A inhibitors. And Dexanet Alpha has been specifically developed to uh, uh, reverse the effects of factor 10A inhibitors and to assist physicians with the management of acute severe bleeding. We studied and Dexanet Alpha in the Annexa 4 study and this study is currently ongoing, and I am presenting today the preliminary results on 67 patients. The study design is shown in this slide. Patients with acute major bleeding who meet specific and rigid inclusion criteria for the severity of bleeding and who have been receiving a factor 10A inhibitor with the last dose within 18 hours are eligible for this study, and they receive an intravenous bolus of indexinet and a two-hour infusion that has been designed to uh, largely reverse the effects of the factor 10A inhibitor. After that, they're monitored for up to 12 hours, both for uh, factor 10A inhibitor, uh, for uh, anti-10A activity, and also we assess the clinical efficacy of the, re of the uh, management of bleeding. Patients are then seen at thir three and 30 days. There are two primary outcomes of this study. One is the change in the anti-10A activity. This is a measure of the effect of the factor 10A inhibitor on the coagulation system. And we also measure the clinical efficacy using independent adjudication with pre-specified criteria. We also uh, are very concerned with safety and we measure safety in a number of ways as shown here and I will describe those results. These are the patients who we enrolled. There were 67 patients in the safety population. This was all of the patients who received indexinet. And we have had an efficacy population who were patients who um, ha came in with acute major bleeding and who were subsequently shown to also have uh, substantially elevated anti-10A activity. So some patients come in with acute bleeding on a factor 10A inhibitor, but in fact their um, uh, factor 10A inhibitor effect is quite low. So we only study the efficacy in patients whose levels were high. Uh, it's important to note that this was an elderly sick population. You can see the mean age is 77. Patients were mostly being treated for atrial fibrillation or venous thromboembolism, and there was a high burden of prior myocardial infarction, stroke, deep vein thrombosis, pulmonary embolism, and heart failure. So a very elderly um, highly compromised population who are now presenting with acute major bleeding. The site of bleeding was gastrointestinal in approximately half of the patients. It was intracranial in 40%, including both intracerebral, subdural, and subarachnoid bleeds. And there was a smattering of other sites of acute severe bleeding as shown at the bottom of the table. This slide shows the reversal of the anti-10A activity for the rivaroxaban patients. I'm not going to show the apixaban patients in the interest of time, but it's very similar for them. At baseline, you can see the median value, which is the line within the box, and the box itself represents the intraquartile range. The whiskers represent the 10th and 90th centile, and the dots represent outliers. At baseline, the anti-10A activity level was 277 nanograms per mil, and this is equivalent to the level that one would expect to see in a patient receiving full-dose rivaroxaban uh, and um, having just received their medication with, within a few hours. So these were quite high levels. And after the administration of indexinet, we saw these levels reduced by 89%. Um, uh, and the reduction was maintained through to the end of the infusion with partial return uh, to uh, baseline levels at four hours and gradual diminution thereafter. 
On the clinical efficacy side, uh, we're showing the results uh, as a uh, whisker plot. At the top in the box, you can see the overall result. 79% of patients were adjudicated as having excellent or good hemostasis. The line shows the overall, the blue, little blue line shows the overall result, and you can see for a variety of subgroups that all patients responded at approximately the same level of efficacy, and in particular, I draw your attention to the gastrointestinal and intracranial bleeding sites, where we had 84 and 80 percent of patients adjudicated as having effective hemostasis, which means reversal of bleeding. Our safety assessment went through to 30 days. It's worth noting that in this elderly sick population, in fact, after they presented with bleeding, most patients were not restarted on their anticoagulant therapy. Thrombotic events, which would include stroke or MI or deep vein thrombosis, uh, occurred within three days of, of indexinet in four patients and by 30 days in 12 patients, a rate that's not unexpected considering the severity of disease of these patients and the lack of anticoagulant therapy in most. Therapeutic anticoagulation was in fact only restarted in one of the patients who had a thrombotic event before it actually occurred. There was 10 deaths at 30 days, of which six were cardiovascular. So in conclusion, indexinet, bolus, and two-hour infusion rapidly reversed anti-10A activity <coughs> essentially reversed the effect of the uh, factor 10A inhibitor drug. We saw effective hemostasis in 79% of patients, and thrombotic events occurred at rates that were consistent with the overall high risk profile of these patients. Yeah. This uh, paper is uh, being published uh, today in the New England Journal uh, and should be available online already. Thank you very much for your attention. All right. Thank you, Dr. Conley. Kurt, why don't you start? So you, you have not shown data for eloxaban. Has this been tested? Maybe not in this trial, but, but in, 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 in other investigations. Is, is the effect of indexinet alpha for all factor 10 inhibitors similar? Um, based on uh, phase two studies, uh, the answer is that um, uh, indexinet does reverse the um, anti 10A activity of edoxaban. However, in our study, although we were, uh, it, uh, it was available for adoxaban treated patients, we had no adoxaban treated patients uh, because of the uh, low penetration of adoxaban in the marketplace at this point in time. However, the study is ongoing, and we're actually um, anticipating that we will have adoxaban patients. In fact, we're making efforts to make sure that we do. In these uh, um, uh, phase two trials, it has been shown that there's a small paradoxical increase in prothrombotic variables that can be measured. Uh, has this any clinical impact? Uh, could this be the cause for some uh, of the thrombotic events you have seen after s uh, stopping the infusion? Yes, there is a, uh, uh, an interaction with uh, TFPI um, that has potential prothrombotic effects. Uh, we, in our phase two studies, we've seen no evidence of thrombosis in uh, over 300 volunteers. Um, and uh, we believe that the thrombotic effect that we're seeing uh, in this patient is related to the underlying severity of disease and, in particular, the discontinuation of anticoagulant therapy in a prothrombotic state. Other questions? Stu, can you just tell us briefly uh, how this works? Does it scavenge? Uh, yes. Um, I, I should have probably showed that. I had to make a selection. I got a. Uh, an yeah. email last night saying cut your slides to four. <laughs> um, so uh, this is actually a, um, a modified recombinant uh, human protein. It's actually based on the factor 10A molecule which has been modified. So it's basically an inactive factor 10A lookalike molecule that has the active binding site for the factor 10A inhibitor intact but has no catalytic activity. So you might describe it as a decoy protein that goes around and scavenges up the factor 10A inhibitor molecules, pulling them out of the circulation so that they're no longer available to inhibit uh, coagulation. All right, if I might, one more question. You said the study is ongoing. Was there a question over there? Yes, there is. Oh, go, sorry. Yeah, you're on. 
Uh, Lynn Peterson with Trends in Medicine. So the FDA recently rejected this agent. Can you discuss um, a little bit about what the issues are there? Yeah, I think rejected is not the, the term that um, uh, they used or I would use. In fact, the FDA asked uh, for more information um, uh, uh, about uh, manufacturing and more information and have more uh, questions about the, the study design. Um, and so uh, this information uh, will be provided and I anticipate that once it's provided that they will uh, eventually approve the drug. Not an issue over the safety with the thrombotic events? No, that was not an issue raised at all. I can ask one more. All right, now, so let me ask one more. The study's ongoing? Yes. Uh, by that, what do you mean? You're enrolling more patients with other uh, effective uh, so pain inhibitors? The study was uh, designed to enroll 250 patients, um, 180 of whom would meet the efficacy criteria. Uh, and um, uh, we have only enrolled about 140 patients, so the study continues to enroll, and we're probably going to enlarge the sample size uh, with an amendment. Uh, this um, uh, uh, presentation was triggered by the fact that um, we had, uh, the company, Portola, had a, um, a date for uh, a decision uh, from the FDA, and uh, it was possible that the drug would have been approved at that time. It wasn't, um, and so we thought that we should put some information into the public domain about the uh, descriptive results of the study. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Kurt, one more? Okay. So in this study, you are exclusively investigated, uh, investigating patients with severe bleeding complications. So do you think that this drug could uh, be of benefit in patients who need urgent surgery? Yes. So um, we are uh, planning, but I don't think it's definite, that there would be a, a, a surgical study comparable to the surgical study that's been done with uh, PCC for warfarin bleeding and idarucizumab for dabigatran bleeding. It's a very important population of patients who re do require reversal. I just have one follow-up question. So when you do this uh, preliminary look, is there some statistical penalty for doing that? Is this, um, was this pre-planned, or you just decide to stop and do this? Good Can question. Very good question. So um, we um, uh, decided to do this. The steering committee met uh, in, in the spring when, it, when we anticipated that the drug might be approved in August, and we decided that we would put data into the public domain. Uh, we chose a, a, a fixed date for um, uh, closing the, uh, cutting the data, and uh, we also made a firm decision that we would not stop the study no matter what we saw. So based on that, we uh, also did not need to take a penalty on our uh, final uh, statistical analysis. Thank you. The decision 